I love this passage of scripture. It incorporates this wonderful message, if you only knew. Oh, those words resound so clearly for us. If we only knew, what, what is it? What is it you want us to know? What should we know? Ah, the text sets us up for this wonderful journey of learning and experiencing. It says, if you only knew, if you only understood, if you could only be awakened to it, if you could only comprehend, what? Well, it says that God gives gifts. That God gives, and who is anyone who's asking or seeking a, or desiring a drink, just to ask of him, and he would give you this life-giving water, living water. Wow, I don't know about you, but there's things that I don't know, and I'd like to know. Aren't you? Let's join together then and become seekers today. Would you say it with me? I'm a seeker. I'm a seeker. That's a pretty good proclamation. Let's do it again. I'm a seeker. That says, I want to know. I want to understand. I want to know more. I want to be one of those who are in the know. Well, today's text says, if you only knew. Jesus is seen as the great rabbi, the great teacher, a way shower for our lives. So today, I'm inviting you to allow him to be your teacher, instructor, as we look to this text and this scripture lesson for our lives. Allow this passage of scripture to come alive for you and allow it to speak to you without any judgments, but allowing it just to resonate within your heart and life, for it, has, it is so full of great insights for us for the journey. Now, in the story, the setting is Jesus has come to the well a well where you might draw, draw a cool drink. And there in this time of day, a woman is there, a woman, a Samaritan woman, a woman seen as an outcast by society, a woman whom many Jews would not be in relationship or have even a conversation with. So there she is uh, coming to the well, and Jesus asks of her, would you draw out from the well a drink for me? And the woman says, why are you talking to me? You know, excuse me, Jews don't usually have conversations, and certainly a man having a conversation with a woman at this time is not really appropriate. There were so many inappropriate moments, you might say, for society's norms, and Jesus was breaking them all as he wanted to bring about a teaching experience. So it is in the journey of our life that every day the words of Jesus echo down through the ages to become alive for a teaching experience for us. Jesus says to her, well, if you knew, if you only knew, you would ask of me for this living water. Now, the dialogue had gone on and on, and Jesus had been talking with her, saying, I know all about you. I know about your history. I know about your past. And she was kind of stunned. Wow, you know about me? And she was asking the who, what, when, where, how, whys of life from Jesus. Many of us have been there, too, where we're at this place in life where we're asking, wait a minute, who, what, when, where, how? Why? We're searching and we're seeking and we're looking for insight. We're looking for divine guidance. We're looking for some sort of inspiration for our lives that would unfold to show us the pathway. We're like this woman at the well. And I love this because every story in the Bible is your story. And every opportunity as we read scripture is an opportunity for us to see ourselves. It's like looking in a mirror because we too then are that woman at the well, no matter what gender you may be. We, too, are Jesus in the moment as well, no matter what gender we may be. We see these stories are there to be a mirror for us to look into the scripture and to reflect back to us. Oh, this is the story of my life. I, too, have found many times, you would say, that I've been asking, wait a minute, God, how is this going to work out? God, where do I go? God, I don't know what to do. God, where and how, why, when? And we keep asking these kind of questions in the journey of our searching. And Jesus says to her, if you knew, if you only knew, you would ask of this living water, this wonderful living water that is unfolding for you, that's life-giving. Now, we must understand this, that the Bible is full of all kinds of symbolism. And for us to understand Scripture, we can't look at it in the black and white, in the literal context, because we would be so misled in the journey of what's being taught to us through the power of Scripture itself alone. We're never, we will never understand the Bible until we embrace the very thinking that the writers had, the very way that they approached 
for they spoke and they wrote in ways that were teaching of a deeper language. I call it the language of branches, where every single lesson takes you on a journey deeper in, sort of extending outward. And we have to look into the text. We have to look into the words. We have to see the inner meaning that's there. So filled with biblical symbolism is this story that no literal reading would really bring it justice. But we have to look at this because this is our story and we're seeing as if we're looking in a mirror. So when we look at the word water or living water, we found throughout the scriptures that the ancient texts have always referred to water as that symbolism of thought, that thought that flows through your mind like water, fluid. Okay? We find many illustrations for us in biblical stories where Jesus walking out on the water. Is the story about Jesus tiptoeing across the waves? And the, is that the lesson that we're supposed to learn from it? That maybe we too could walk across our swimming pool or the Chattahoochee or maybe, you know, across uh, Lake Lanier? That's the invitation for our lives? Certainly not. But when we understand this idea of water being thought and the consciousness, a chaotic thought, and Jesus inviting you to rise above, step out and walk above the chaotic thought of this world, that's a powerful invitation for us. We look and we see that Jesus was baptized, and in his experience, they were moving waters. For ancient Jewish tradition was that baptism service were always where the water was moving, taking away, washing away something. It was never a baptism in stagnant waters, but a water of movement. And so it is that there was releasing, cleansing, uh, uh, washing and renewal within our lives. And that whole experience of baptism is then is that the waters of new thought are cleansing you, that you are, are releasing and letting go of the old and welcoming the new in the journey of your life. How about the story of those uh, children of Israel coming to the Red Sea? And there they face the waters right there and the, as an obstacle. And how many times have we seen water or thoughts of the world being an obstacle saying, Oh, I can't do this, or this is not possible, or I'll never make it through, or oh, I don't know how or when or where or why I'm even here. And yet those waters part, and those thoughts, that movement makes a way where there seems to be no way within the journey of our lives. And now in this story, Jesus is talking about living water. In other words, thought that's alive, alive that's full of life-giving power and awareness full of these great aha moments. That's right. He's saying sort of drink of this great cup of aha. You know, this, oh, oh, I get it. Oh, I understand. Oh, there's enlightenment. Oh, it's been revealed. I'm awakened. That's what Jesus is saying. If you only knew, you would ask of this wonderful understanding, a living water that is an aha. I get it. For living water really means inspiration. For the word inspiration comes from the Latin word spiro, meaning I breathe into. And we understand that. We understand that this, imp imp this inspiration is the divine. I'm giving you an inspiration. I'm breathing into you. I am offering you this inspiration. When you're at that place where you're saying, what, how, when, where, why, oh, we drink of the living water. A divine inspiration. It's simply we, it's the wonderful spirit breathing into our lives insight, breathing into our lives guidance, breathing into our lives direction for our lives. How many of you remember the favorite passage, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge God. And God will direct your path. And God will direct your paths. You see, when we're looking for that guidance, when we're looking for the answers, when we're seeking and searching and trying to find revelation that would say, show me the way, show me the how, show me the what, show me the where, help me, Lord, because I'm seeking that inside insight and that divine inspiration. Well, it's there. It's promised to us. So we must allow it to flow through us. It's sort of like that meaning of the word I breathe into? Boy, don't you breathe easily? You know, you all have been breathing here, I think. I don't see anybody black and blue here or passing out. So it looks like you all been doing a good job. You're all breathing, just relaxing here and taking in breath. You're allowing it to flow in 
You're allowing the flow out. You're just subconsciously breathing, aren't you? Anyone here tracking your thoughts about breathing? Like, must breathe in, must breathe out, must breathe in, must... No, you're not. You're just relaxing and allowing it to flow. So it is for the journey of our life that this living water is this inspiration. And we're supposed to allow this divine inspiration, divine guidance, divine insight, divine direction to come to us so easily and effortlessly. It's like just breathing subconsciously, allowing it to flow in and through our lives in a powerful way that will reveal to us the answers that we so seek within our lives. Because seeking guidance is really easier than what you think. It's as easy as taking a breath. It's as easy as relaxing. It's as easy as resting. It's as easy as simply trusting. It's as easily as simply as opening your life up. It's as easy as simply saying, God, I know you know the way when there seems to be no way. So I simply rest and I trust in that. For in that journey, it's awakening your intuition. It's the, the intuition is that ability to understand immediately without the need for conscious reasoning. Just say, oh, I got a feeling. I got a gut feeling. I got a notion. I got a hunch. I, suddenly it's coming to me. I feel this. Feeling is truly the language that the spirit is speaking to us constantly. And so when we awaken to our feelings, when we awaken to this, we're awakening to it, an inner intuition that ever wants to speak to us. This intuition, it really means taught from within, okay? Taught from within. For within lies the source of power of all knowing. Within us, you'll find the greatest teacher. Within us is the answer. It lies within each and every one of us. So what we're looking for is this living water, a divine inspiration. Oh, let us drink of it. Let's take this cup and just drink it down because when we have this divine inspiration, we realize, ah, I get it. I understand. I, I'm awakened to this divine truth. I know I, I can just trust and I allow God to lead and guide my paths. What's the thing you thirst most for in life? You thirst most for understanding, don't you? And Jesus speaks of a living water that will quench your thirst. A living, an aha that quenches your wondering. An aha that quenches your how, God. An aha that quenches that thirst to say, I need to know when, where, and all these aspects of the searching of my life. But it unfolds for us as we drink this wonderful spiritual guidance that's here for our lives. When we allow the presence of God to teach and guide and show the way, amazing things will then unfold for our lives. Because those of you who've been day to day, Searching, looking for answers, questioning, wondering. The Spirit of God wants to teach, show, and reveal. This is the very promise for us. For if we knew, as it says in the text, we'd go to the Spirit of God first, wouldn't we, and foremost? We wouldn't be running off to someone saying, please give me advice. Let me call my best friends. Tell me what I should do. Let me call for some advisor to somebody give me insight. We would turn to all, we turn to all these others because. We just simply don't understand that divine guidance, divine wisdom, divine insight is readily available for you. You just need to open your life, open your heart, open your mind, and begin to drink of that which will quench the thirst for searching within you. This living water is wisdom and insight that comes to us, insight that we really understand that God is there showing the way and desires to show the way for us. Because one of the things we have to realize, number one, is God uh, within, within us has no problems. Now, think about that. God has no problems. You know, we, we often think, well, we have problems, but God has no problems. So when we pray, we know that God only has answers. God doesn't have problems. Because, wait a minute, if God did have problems, who would solve God's problem? You see, so we understand. God doesn't have any problems. God is only the answers, and the answers are there for us. So when we go deep within, and when we drink of this living water, when we allow this living water to be inspiration, when we allow this living water to be a clarity of thinking, when we allow this living water to be a, an aha, when we allow this water, living water to reveal to us 
this wonderful guidance and truth, we understand we're only going to receive answers. And problems are gone. Questions, wondering, searching comes to an end. So we rise to this point. We rise to a place of, of a higher consciousness. We rise to a place of a greater understanding. We rise to a place of enlightenment. And we abandon this sort of objective reasoning that we may have within our lives, and we defer to this wonderful spirit. You know, we defer to the divine. Because sometimes in our, rejected, our objective reasoning, what we are constantly struggling with is, I have got to know how. I have got to know when. I've got to know why. I've got to know where. You know, and we're struggling with that. So then we employ our objective reasoning. Well, I think it's this way, and I think it's that way, and I think it should be this time, and I think this is how it's going to be done, and I think is this is where it's going to be done. But we understand this, that Jesus spoke to the disciples, and again, in another symbolic way, he spoke to the disciples and says, I have food to eat of that you know not of. What? Jesus is the caterer? Is he coming up with a good meal? You know, is it a vegan meal? Is it a meat meal? Is it roast beef? Is it, is it kosher? That's not what he's talking about at all. And again, here's the symbolism. We have to look deep into the text. Jesus is saying, I have ways that you know not of. That meat being that substance that may unfold for us guidance and direction in the life of maturing and unfolding our highest and best is this simply phrase that says, there are ways that you don't even know of that you may not understand. That's how God works. And I want you to understand that when we let go of our own objective reasoning and our own way that we struggle with the how, the who, what, the when, where, and we allow God to manifest, we're then open for all kinds of exciting experiences. You can imagine the children of Israel standing at the water's edge at the Red Sea. And there, you know, Moses is saying, we got to cross the water. Well, okay. Uh, the objective reasoning would say, who's going to build a boat? Uh, is anybody, uh, are we building a bridge first? Uh, anyone got a raft going on here? Uh, you know, who knows how to swim? Uh, who's going to, you know, can we swim on each other's back? I mean, how are we going to get all this stuff across the Red Sea? How are we going to cross these waters, you see? And then God says, God's ways are not your ways. There's meat I have that you know not of. There are ways that I'm going to work that you may not understand. And waters part and people go, whoa. I never thought that's the way it would happen. I didn't even dream it would unfold that way. You see, this is where we learn to trust and say, allow God and give a free hand to God, saying, God, you work it out. Work out in wondrous ways. You have uh, the power and the ability to, to make it happen for us. So we allow that to give freedom to God to unfold the highest and best in our journey. And we don't worry. We don't worry about a lot of things. We do worry about our prayers and our needs and our desires, and we struggle with those. But isn't it funny? You don't worry about how your food is digested. How many of you had breakfast this morning? Uh huh. Did you contemplate, how is this going to be digested? How is this food going to go through my body? You just eat, and you trust the body to work, right? Wow, you're already people of great trust. You're already people of great faith. You see that? You put faith in a lot of things. Now we need to just put our faith in God. And say, you know what? I don't know how it's going to happen, but I trust, I believe, and I operate in that way of knowing that all things are going to work together for good. Here's the beautiful passage of Scripture that says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask of God who gives generously. So when we're asking, when we're like the woman at the well and we're wondering the how, when, where, why's of life, Jesus says, you simply ask for wisdom. And wisdom is given generously to our lives. This is where, as we rest in the evening, prepare to go to sleep, you've got a how, when, where, why question in your life. You just simply turn that over to your subconscious and say, God, I know the answer is there. And I rest in you. And I depend and on the answer being there because I know you will provide it for me. And you go to sleep in the morning. It's amazing how many times you wake up with insight in your life. Um, amazing how many things will unfold for you. Because you begin to understand that the, the subjective mind that you have is subject to thought. Your mind is subject to thought. And when you put these thoughts of trust, put these thoughts of great direction in, into your mind, you know what's going to unfold for you? Direction. Because you put that mind. I know God is directing me. I know God is guiding my steps. 
I know God is revealing me the who, what, when, and where. I know it's all unfolding for me. I simply trust. And when I do that, our subjective mind simply responds in that wonderful ways. And it knows the desires of our heart and will answer and will speak and reveal to us in maybe a dream, a hunch, or a feeling. Several years ago, we were at another piece of property. We lived, uh, and I mean, we worshipped at uh, 1379 Kelly Road in a different building. We sold that building in, uh, what is it, October, uh, uh, about 2015, I think it was actually the final sale. But 2013, people from Children's Health had come by and stopped at the church and visited with me and said, we're interested in buying your building. Would you sell? And I said, well, we have no reason to sell at that time, but talk to me, you know? <laughs> talk to me. I, I, I'm listening. Talk to me. Somehow the real estate agent didn't quite get this when I'm saying, talk to me, talk to me. You know, I mean, because, you know, something about money makes us here, right? Uh -huh. And we open ourselves up to options. It was several years later that one day I was at Piccadilly Restaurant next door. And Piccadilly Restaurant was for sale. They were closing and saying, we are being purchased by Children's Health. And there was this hunch, this spirit within me sort of speaking, wow, if they're buying Piccadilly, and they own the land over here, and the church is in the middle, maybe they want to buy us. Now, two years have gone by, and rational thinking says, Shh, they already came by. And I said, talk to me. And there was no talking. So apparently, they're not interested in buying. So rational thinking would say, no, I wouldn't even entertain that hunch. Just wrap that thought up and just forget that. And I said, no. There was a spirit sort of speaking within me, giving me this prompting, giving me this guidance, giving me this inspiration to pick up the phone and say, I'm going to call Children's Health and say, hey, did you want to buy our building? He said, yes, we would love to buy your building. I'm like, well, well, where you been? Well, we said we thought you didn't want. I said, talk to me. I said, talk to me. Well, suddenly they began talking the right kind of language of $3 million, and we sold the building. And that's how we got here to buy this building. And uh, we're, we understand that too often what happens is we don't acknowledge those spirit promptings. We don't understand. We kind of ignore them. And in our lives, when the spirit is trying to speak to you, show you the way, offer you guidance, sometimes we're like uh, too busy with negative thoughts, uh, a negative mood that says, well, if this isn't going to happen. I don't know how it's going to happen or when it's going to happen. So our consciousness all is no, 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 no. And we miss the Spirit's prompting. We miss the guidance of the Holy Spirit leading in our lives. And that negativity holds us from seeing and recognizing God's guidance in our lives. It's kind of like, suppose you were in a store window and you're gazing in at the merchandise and you're thinking, oh, I would love to have this. And while you're standing there, some eccentric billionaire comes by and slips you a $500 bill in your hand. And you're thinking, what? Somebody's handing me a, a track or somebody's handing me a... a brochure about some party or some disco party or something that's happening, or maybe they're just handing me a flyer on some beauty salon or whatever it is. I'll just throw that thing away. Woo! And we missed out on the riches of blessing. I want to tell you this, that the divine guidance, the Spirit of God is ever leading and directing our lives, and it is offering living water at every moment of our lives, inspirations available. But if we're not aware, if we're not clearly in tune, if we're not listening, if we're not really uh, awakened to it, we'll miss out on so many opportunities within our lives. So we must uh, be alert for divine ideas and feelings that come to us and be able to recognize them and to become still, to relax, to close our eyes and simply say, divine source, I know that all things I see and all wisdom I desire is there for me. And I rejoice that the answer is flowing in and through me because that's the beginning of the unfolding of this guidance that's so ready for us, that desires to lead us into higher past, into green pastures and still waters. Isn't it wonderful that the psalmist uh, that wrote the 23rd Psalm, it's a, it is a listing of declarations. It's not a listing of desires, but a listing of declarations. It is a beautiful prayer, and you might just pray that because what it is is constantly just recognizing, affirming, declaring in the positive. 
The Lord is my shepherd. There's no ask there, is it? That's just clear. I shall not want. Clear. Done deal, right? There's no, uh, there's nothing in, there's no maybe. It's a clear de declaration. And when we say, he leadeth me beside the still waters. Wow, that's a declaration. God is leading me. God is guiding me. God is showing me the way. God's giving me the cup of living water to drink from. God's giving me the inspiration that I need. God's showing me the aha. God is showing me the who, what, when, where, how, and why in the right and perfect times. It's all being revealed when we understand that. So we pray this wonderful 23rd Psalm in this declaration. He leadeth me. He leadeth me. Oh, how beautiful that is. And we understand that as God is leading, surely goodness and mercy, that's not a trio, uh, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. That's what it's saying is, of course, goodness and mercy, they're coming right behind you. Every, every step of the way you go, your divine guidance is being unfolding for you. What's following right behind you? Mercy, goodness. It's right there with every step you take. That's the declaration. That's what we pray, pray in the affirmative. We pray that 23rd Psalm over and over again because it constantly declares the goodness of God, the divine guidance unfolding for our lives. So when we understand this, that the word intuition, that which we're relating to this living water, this aha, this wonderful intuition that reveals truth to us, that shows us, is also understood to mean inner hearing. That we're looking for this divine guidance, what it requires is us to trust that intuition, to trust that inner hearing. What's that still small voice within you that's speaking to you? What's that still small voice? And I will show you the way. Several years ago, my daughter was Miss Georgia, and in the pageant series, she was preparing to go to the national pageant, and her coach called me and said, you know, she's going to have to have some extra outfits for a week-long pageant a series of uh, appearances, and there's luncheons and meetings with the mayor, and there's all these kind of events, and I think, oh, wow, okay. And I said, well, we got to get her ready for this wonderful experience, so we got to go shopping. And at that time, I looked at my budget, and it's a little bit teeny tiny that I had to uh, really, you know, help her out with uh, in preparation for all the expenses of going to this national pageant. And I just said, Spirit, I don't know the how, I don't know the when, I don't know the where, I'm not even sure I know the why, but I just leave it up to you. I was the woman at the well right there at that moment, and I was turning to the wonderful spirit of God saying, I want to drink some living water and inspiration and aha, unknowing. I went to bed. Next morning I woke up and I said to Robert, get in the truck. We're going. Come on, Jillian. I said to my daughter, we're going. Where are we going? We're going to the dress shop, so to buy the dresses that you need because we're getting ready to move. Well, where are we going? I said, we're going to Ross. Well, Ross, well, there's a Ross over here. No, we're not going to that. Well, there's a Ross over there. We're not going to that one either. We're, well, there's a, we're going to the Ross on the other side of town. Why are we going to the Ross on the other side? Because that's where the dresses are. Well, well, how do you, what? I just said, I know. I just said, I know. We pulled up to the parking lot, stopped the car, and because my daughter is coming from her mother being a little bit more fundamentalist in her thinking, I just turned to her and said, honey, don't worry. Everything's going to work out fine, and Jesus will help us. We walked into the store, and strangely enough, there was a sales associate came to the door, and Ross usually doesn't have sales associates meeting at the door saying, can I help you? You're kind of looking for someone to help you. Uh, but here this gentleman came and said, can I help you? And I said, my daughter's looking for some dresses. Yes, we're going to this pageant, and she needs to have appearance outfits and dresses for different events. And he said, well, what size? I said, she's a zero. He says, wow, we got a plethora of zeros. We have so few clients who are size zero in this area that we have just buku dresses in a size zero. Oh, so my daughter walks up and here's rack after rack after rack after rack of zero. And she, he said, they just haven't been moving. So we marked them all down and they're on sale. And she pulls out a dress and this is $5, dad, and I love it. Look at this one. This is gorgeous. And it's only $12. Look at this one. It's $9. And before, you know, I was like, she was going into the dressing room. She says, dad, this is so fabulous. Here's all these wonderful choices of everything that I need. Everything's just going to be just perfect. She came out and to the dressing room and well, 
got the list of everything that she needed for all these appearances, and it was a very affordable in the budget. We went to ring it up, and I said, stop. Look at the name tag of the man helping us. What's his name? Jesus. <laughs> Did I not say Jesus would help us? What's the likelihood that the sales associate Ross's name is Jesus? You see, this is this divine guidance, divine inspiration that unfolds for us. When we allow God to work, and I think this is God's wonderful sense of humor, that it all happens in this wonderful way and how it all puts together. Here's a dad struggling, trying to provide everything and make sure that everything's wonderful for his daughter. And God is there saying, I know the desires of your heart. Drink of this living water. Come on, have a cup of this. Because if you only knew, you'd go here first. And you would say, I want to drink of it every day. I want to have a cup of this living water that's inspiration, that's aha, that's showing me the way, that's leading and guiding me, and I will listen. Because that intuition is this inner hearing, the Spirit of God speaking to us. And when we listen clearly, we understand that which is heard. That's the word revelation, that which is heard. You get a revelation. You hear it within. You go, oh, I understand now. I understand why I'm supposed to go here or why I'm supposed to do this or why God is unfolding this or I understand that it may not be the way that I think it's going to happen. And let me tell you this, in this church, there's a thousand times when people have set forth and said, a miracle should happen this way and it happens that way. It should, in our reasoning, in our rational thinking, it should go this way and God surprises in the most unusual ways and unusual manners of provision for us. Miracles have happened for us in the most unusual ways as we just simply listen and allow and ask for this wonderful guidance. How many of you remember the former building that we were in had no air conditioning? Woo. Lots of hot summers, right? First time the air conditioning broke down, we realized that it was gonna cost us about $50,000 just to get it repaired. And even then, it wasn't necessarily that it was going to be sufficient enough to hold on. The equipment was so old. How are we going to pay for this? People got together and said, well, we'll ask everybody to write a $10 check. Oh, we never make the goal. We'll ask everybody to, you know, could they mortgage their houses? Oh, I don't know if that's going to happen either. How, what are we going to do? How are we going to raise this money? Let's have a bake sale. Let's have 10 bake sales. Well, we need about 20 bake sales. Let, uh, can we do 100 bake sales? Can we just open up a bakery? What, can we just do something? Because how are we going to do this? Because we couldn't figure out the way of how we're going to do it. And then God sends a billionaire cross-dresser. Now, that was not in my how. <laughs> that was not in my list of saying, I know how God is going to provide for me. Wonderful Barbara Zimbelli came by to the church. A woman of extreme means who fell in love with this church because she was a cross-dresser and found love and acceptance and found a place where she could be who she was. And she said, Pastor, what's the challenge? What, $50,000? Well, here, here you go. Because in her lifestyle and her means, $50,000 was like a $5 bill to a $3 billion person who has that kind of, had that kind of livelihood and income. She owned ma major companies, and she had homes all across the United States. And she had wonderful means to provide and be a blessing. And you're thinking, wait a minute, that was not in my list of hows. In my rational thinking, I'm not saying, sure, God's going to send a cross-dressing uh, billionaire to our door in the next five minutes, and that's going to resolve the issue. But when we open up our lives to the Spirit's guidance, and we say, I don't care how it's done, and it could be in means and ways that I have no idea of thinking about. I have no clarity of thinking or no understanding. It could be some unusual ways. And God provides. David Carter shares a testimony in class how he was living in a home with no air conditioning and heat had broken down and was looking to say, I'm going to sell my house. I'm going to buy something new. And people were saying, how? You don't have the means to buy something new. No, I know the Spirit of God is going to open the doors for me. I am going to step out in faith. I'm believing. And so David begins packing, packing up all of his home, getting ready to move. And people are going, where are you moving to? I don't know. Where, how are you going to afford a house? I don't know. 
How are you going to get a place to live? I, I don't know. Truly, a woman at the well experienced with the how, when, where, whys of Jesus asking these kind of questions. And as the spirit unfolds, thinking, and David said to me one day, he said, well, I think I'm going to play the lottery, and that's how I'm going to get my new house. God will provide me. And this seems to make sense, rational thinking. I'll just keep playing the lottery until I win, and then I'll be able to buy this house, buy a new house, and move on out. Packed up, ready to go, he goes out looking at homes well above his financial means. And you're thinking, well, you are a little crazy thinking about doing that when you don't even have the money, but you're just trusting. Out of the strangest circumstances, his daughter sells her home and says, can I move in with you? And moves in with her, with, with David, and says, hey, uh, why don't we buy a house together? And says, I have the means. And they're closing on July 23rd or 19th, 18th, on a uh, almost uh, $300,000 home with a pool and a hot tub. And David has beautiful means. Uh, everything that he was desiring in his list uh, of property is there. He's packed, ready to go. Now, I'm going to say this. I'm sharing this illustration because it's not a Pastor Paul story. It's someone who is in the congregation who is not the pastor telling you that this works. It's telling you of the miraculous, of divine guidance that's there for us. When we say, God, I don't care about the how. I just drink of the living water of inspiration. I just drink of this wonderful aha. I drink of this enlightenment. I drink of this understanding. And I'll drink of this inner hearing. And I'll listen to the divine guides. God makes a way when there seems to be no way. And that's the miracle of our lives. When we look at this story, it's more than Jesus' encounter of a woman at the well. It's you and I encountering the questions of life and knowing that God is there to make a way, to provide, to God. When you step out in faith and believe and listen to the voice of God, God will make the way. You don't have to make the way. And the way may come in the strangest and the most unusual circumstances, ways that you did not think. David said, I never thought I'd live in a house with my daughter. I never thought that's the way it would be. I never thought that we would uh, share a home. And they each have, a, in this, you talk to David after church, they have a David has his own private, uh, shall we say, suite uh, on the lower level with beautiful walkout, sliding doors, going into the pool, gorgeous. And she has her own private space on the second floor uh, with kitchens. Each have their own, uh, shall we say, homes within the homes. Uh, you think, wow, and what a testimony of the miraculous, how God works if you just simply trust and drink of the living water. Are you ready? Dip up the dipper. Let's drink of it together. God is there to guide, lead, direct, and inspire. Amen.